Sources of Candida Organisms Nosocomial invasive fungal infections are most commonly caused by Candida species. As mentioned before, Candida species are normal commensals of the gastrointestinal tract, skin, genitourinary tract, and occasionally respiratory tract. In particular, the gastrointestinal tract may harbor Candida organisms in the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small bowel, and less commonly, large bowel. Candida organisms readily adhere to the mucosa of the mouth and may proliferate there causing oropharyngeal candidiasis, or they may extend into the esophagus causing esophageal candidiasis. Not only will they proliferate on the mucosal surface, but they may on occasion invade into the deeper tissues in these areas, producing invasive disease. The respiratory tract may also be an organ that may harbor candida organisms. These organisms may be carried into the trachea and bronchi through the aspiration of oropharyngeal contents. Usually, invasion into the lung tissue does not occur unless there is presence of profound and prolonged neutropenia. If profound and prolonged neutropenia does occur, candida organisms may invade directly into the lung tissue from the bronchioles, resulting in invasive fungal infection. Moreover, at times, candida organisms may also be found in pulmonary tissue when they are deposited there after transmission via the bloodstream. Candida organisms are typically commensals of the skin. However, they may proliferate on the skin, producing cutaneous candidiasis if the conditions are appropriate to support their growth. Such conditions exist at times of maceration and excessive moisture. When these conditions exist, candida organisms will proliferate on the skin and may even invade the epidermis. Candida organisms are also commensals of the genitourinary tract. In the genitourinary tract, they commonly adhere to the mucosa of the vagina and may produce symptoms when they reproduce and attain a sufficient organism load, approximately 10 to the fifth colony-forming units. In addition to being normal commensals of the skin, gastrointestinal tract, respiratory tract, and genitourinary tract, candida organisms may be transmitted onto the skin from the hands of healthcare personnel. In such a situation, healthcare personnel that harbor candida organisms can then transmit the organisms directly to the skin of the patient. Although candida organisms colonize a number of sites in the body, candidemia and invasive candidiasis do not usually occur because the body's defenses prevent invasion of body sites by these organisms. However, at times, an imbalance between the pathogen and the host defenses can occur. The imbalance is prompted by the presence of a number of risk factors. One of the risk factors predisposing patients to candidemia and invasive candidiasis is the presence of central venous catheters. Central venous catheters may prompt invasion of candida organisms by a number of mechanisms. First, candida organisms that colonize the skin may migrate along the external surface of the catheter from the skin to the bloodstream as the catheter traverses through the tissues and eventually ends up in the bloodstream. Secondly, candida microorganisms may colonize the internal lumen of the catheter at the central venous catheter's hub where it connects to IV tubing. This occurs as a result of manipulation of the catheter by healthcare personnel. Organisms then traverse the internal lumen of the catheter into the bloodstream. Third, a rare occurrence is the contamination of the infusate fluid, which then carries the microorganisms into the bloodstream. A second risk factor enabling candida microorganisms to invade the bloodstream is the use of broad-spectrum antibacterial therapy. As mentioned previously, since candida organisms colonize the gastrointestinal tract including the mouth, esophagus, stomach, and small bowel, any influence that diminishes the bacterial content of the gastrointestinal tract will allow candida species to overgrow. This occurs when broad-spectrum antibacterial therapy is employed and candida organisms within the gastrointestinal tract are not held in check by the presence of other bacterial organisms. In such a situation, candida microorganisms will proliferate and reach a critical organism load which will allow them to translocate from the gastrointestinal tract into the bloodstream.
The third risk factor of significance predisposing patients to candidemia and invasive candidiasis is the presence of extensive burns over more than 50% of the body. In the situation of an extensive burn, the integumentary barrier is stripped away. This allows bacteria and candida species that normally colonize the skin to proliferate and invade tissues in an unfettered fashion. Candida organisms then produce invasive disease. The fourth factor predisposing patients to invasive candidiasis is the use of chemotherapy. Chemotherapy can destroy the mucosa of the gastrointestinal tract. In addition, chemotherapy may also produce neutropenia. The lack of the neutrophil cellular defense and the denuded gastrointestinal mucosa provide the opportunity for candida organisms to invade the body from the gastrointestinal tract. As noted here, candida organisms present on the damaged gastrointestinal mucosa that cannot be checked by neutrophil cellular defenses easily translocate into the bloodstream and cause invasive fungal infections. Another predisposing risk factor for candidemia and invasive candidiasis are certain surgical procedures such as liver transplantation. In a liver transplant, the new transplanted liver is anastomosed to the duodenum. Because the gastrointestinal tract is colonized with candida microorganisms, such patients are prone to invasive candidiasis when these organisms leak out of the gastrointestinal tract through bile leaks associated with the anastomosis of the bile duct of the transplanted liver into the duodenal loop. Similarly, organ dysfunction such as obstruction of the urinary tract may also lead to candidemia and invasive candidiasis. Envision the normal drainage of the kidney through the ureters into the bladder. Due to the normal flushing of urine, organisms do not proliferate in the kidney nor in the ureter. However, should a ureter become obstructed, a different situation will arise. Microorganisms, which usually should be cleared with the normal flushing mechanism of the genitourinary tract, may become trapped and proliferate due to stasis of urine produced because of an obstructed ureter. Candida organisms duplicating in the urine in the obstructed ureter may then invade the kidney. Subsequently, invasion of the bloodstream may ensue with dissemination of the organisms throughout the body.